Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's Susan Phelps. And Judy Atari. And we are your Berkshire Hathaway, Florida Realty Market Information Specialist. Today we have the June 2024 market to sh report to share with you. And we're going to answer a question that I had about what effect does the election have on, well, elections in general have on the real estate market. Or do they? Or do they? Hmm. Well, hmm. uh, as well, we're going to talk about affordability and what you need to look out for in terms of, you know, making some plans ahead for uh, buying your next home. Okay, so start out, let's look at Manatee look at County. The numbers. Um, so Manatee County um, update for June 2024 compared to June 2023. Um, our single family home sales were down just a smidge at 4.1%. So we had 728 single family homes, which is your standalone home. And then our condo sales were down 17% at 246 sales. Our single family home prices, median prices, were down, this is really a smidge, down 1.2%, and they were priced at 518950 The median price for condos was down a little more significantly at nearly 7%, and that was three forty four four ninety five. dollars Again, the condos in Manatee County may be very expensive, long boat key condos, or very affordable little tiny condo somewhere else. Um, single family homes, time to contract. So that is the time you put your house on the market in the MLS for sale until you receive and accept a contract, not until it's actually closed. And that is up 54% to 57 days for single family homes and up a whopping 114, almost 115% to 73 days for the condos. Um, here's something that's quite notable for our market, the single family homes month supply. And again, if you've watched this before, six month supply is our industry standard for a balanced market. Single family homes were at four months, um, up 42.9%. So still a seller's market, but not crazy ransom type prices. And then the month supply for condos is quite balanced at 5.8 months, which is up 70%. So we have a lot more condos on the market. You'll actually have time to look at several, kind of feel what you want. And that's Manatee County. Right. Okay. Sarasota County. Now this is the trend. The trend, <laughs> a little low, a little lower on the number of sales, a tad lower on the prices in Manatee County, whereas in Sarasota, we saw a 10% decrease in the number of sales. We're down to 692 sales for the month of July 2024 compared to, I'm sorry, June, compared to June of 2023. Condo prices went down 25% to 283 sales closed. And we also see a notable price decrease for the median homes, median sales price for single family homes, down 5.3%, 4.95. We see just a little bit of a decrease in the median price of condos down to 384.60. And we're still seeing a rise in the days to contract we went up to 50 days compared to last year, which is 117%. And we went up 68% from last year to 59 days for condos. We have five months of inventory, which is 56% higher than 2023. And we have six months, 6.3 months of inventory in condos, which is up 80%. So is this a trend? We think it might be, but we're going to need some more data in another month before we <laughs> yeah. come to that conclusion. Um, and just to kind of calm the fears or the excitement, <laughs> uh, we looked at closed sales for the quarter for the whole region. So that's a little balance rather than just looking at an individual month. Yeah. So closed sales from quarter to 2024 for Sarasota and Manatee, Ca Manatee counties, which is the North Port area, Sarasota, Bradenton, Metropolitan Statistical Area, 
Um, quarter two, 2024 had 4,567 sales. Quarter two, 2023 had 4,562 sales. So really only a difference of five sales. 1%. Yeah. 0.1%. 0.1%. And those five sales might have happened in August. So, you know, yeah. they might have just fallen over um, or might happen. So paid in cash was pretty similar. Um, median sales price for the region for the two county area is uh, 1765 for 2024 and 1725 for 23. So seriously, 40, 40 different people paid in cash versus mortgage. Um, here's the one I wanted to mention. The median sales price from 2024 to 2023 is off $10. So literally negligent. So median sales price didn't change. Average sales price is up about $40,000. And the two big Bs are the time to sale, which is a little different than the time to contract. So when you contract, you've accepted it. Sale is when it actually closes. Time to sale is up 94 days. So if you're expecting to sell it or to put it on the market, pack your bags and be gone in a month, you might have to wait three or four months because that was up to 94 days, up 27%. Mm -hmm. Yep. Inventory, this is another big one. Our inventory, this is where we see the biggest impact for the region, which is reflected in the numbers we just read. Um, active listings in uh, the region is 5,719 for quarter two, 2024. And we only had uh, 3,545, so a little over 3,500 for last year um, at the same time. So that's a big increase of 61%. And that's when we see things balancing. Month supply of inventory for our region is now up to 4.5 and last year was at three. So we are seeing that stabilizing, mm -hmm. um, but the prices where everyone's saying, I'm waiting for the prices to go down, I'm waiting for the crash, it's not occurring just yet. Well, and wait till we talk about the election cycles. But the summary basically, is that we, we have seen a slowdown, especially in Sarasota County, but it's a multifaceted thing. It's influenced by the rising interest rates, it's influenced by the economic uncertainty. Seasonal factors, we're in the middle of summer, people are traveling, next month people will be getting their kids into school. Um, market sat saturation and evolving buyer preferences. Judy was just talking earlier what she thinks. So we were talking about affordability and, and it made me think about expectations. And I think some of our particularly younger buyers, um, but in general, with so many new home sales, people want to buy that beautiful magazine ready home and people are asking less for projects or they're expecting more from the sellers. That's why things are lingering, I think, where they want the perfect home that somebody's been living in for 10 years mm -hmm. and the sellers are like, it's good for me. Um, so I think our expectations are changing where, where people want that. Uh, many first time home buyers want the home, like say it's a younger person, they want the home their parents live in versus what most people get for a first time home. So I think expectations are a lot. Some people don't maybe have the skills to do the work or just don't want, do, want to do the work. Um, I know this current young adult generations are all about experiences and travel and they don't right. want to sit at home and work on a house. Right. So I think that's affecting too. But we just want to talk a little bit about affordability and expectations of what's a, a actually affordable for. Well, let's just launch time. into our affordable conversation here. Okay. What we, what we have right now is a 40 year low in affordability, which is really disheartening for a lot of people, especially this younger population that you just spoke about. Um, but the good news is, is that we do see wages climbing at a faster pace than they were last year. That's one factor to watch, okay? So, you know, uh, pay attention to that, to that number. Uh, we see prices, slowing down we just talked about that we it, they're they're just not rising at the rate that they were right okay and then the rates from july to november in eight of the last election cycles the rates came down the rates may come down marginally not to three percent no no into the fives which is a nice rate right um, we were looking at some data in the 80s, 14%, 17%, 18%, 19%, 20%, 21%, 22%, 23%, 24%, 25%, 
um, crazy rates. So crazy. Something in the fives might be a reasonable expectation in the next few months, but we are not mortgage experts. We're no. just telling you what we're hearing. No, and our information comes from reliable sources, Fannie Mae's economic and strategic research group put out a report today that showed up in our emails and they actually are forecasting two rate changes. They're looking at September and December for the, um, for the Fed to lower rates. Now, this is the first we've heard of two rate changes we just, we, we don't know for sure, but Freddie Mac seems to be a good source of information. Yes. Uh, you know, even though we're, people are waiting for that affordability to happen, you know, maybe that's a good idea, but you may change your mind after you hear what we have to say about election cycles. Okay, so. Yeah. We have three charts here to share with you. We got these from um, Jimmy Burgess, who is a great source of information for us. He is a Berkshire Hathaway broker in Northern Florida, and he got together with an expert from Keeping Current Matters, which is a real estate market information hub. So typically in an election year, you have three areas that are affected uncertainty, which, you know, we spoke about that earlier. Everybody wants to wait. They just don't know what's going to happen. So they're not making any big decisions. And certainly buying a house is the biggest one you'll make. And they're looking at policy expectations, you know, well, they'll feel better. Right. If, if yeah. things yeah. are going in the direction that they think they should go, if, if the person that they think is going to lead the country into be. a a direction that they like, then they're going to um, be more confident. Consumer confidence is a big one. Yeah. And then does the election cycle really have a dramatic effect? Well, it's, it's, I, it depends on how you define dramatic. That's true. <laughs> this first chart that you're looking at here, uh, we're looking at a seasonal drop. Now this is, mind you, nationwide information. Our seasonal drop doesn't happen in October and November. Um, those uh, sales may be delayed if, there's a, if there is a drop. But the seasonal drop that they're talking about that typically occurs is about 10%. And then you can see by the chart that if it's an election year, it drops another 5%. So a 15% is a marginal slowdown considering the area and the time of the year. And they were talking about those being delayed. Like, like yes. those purchases aren't never going to happen. They just may not happen during October, November, but right. they do see them picking up later. People just hold off because yes. they're uncertain. Yes. So the second chart we have here is that is, is showing you that of the last 11 cycles, nine showed an increase in the number of home sales. And the year following the election in the four year cycle is usually the best year for real estate in general. And you know, that, that is, is shown by history and that's what we have to predict right. the future. We're just saying it's historical history. data. We're not saying what's uh, definitely going to happen. We're, well, my crystal ball's been broken yeah. for a while. Mine's I mean. very cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what about prices? How are prices affected by election year? Um, the data we're seeing shows prices of existing homes, so resale homes, in seven of the last eight four-year election cycles shows increase in home prices in the year following the election. So if this holds true, we would hope in 2025, we will see an increase in the resale prices. Right. Um, and then new home prices, which um, data on new homes, a little different game. Um, in nine of the last 11 election cycles, new home prices increased. Um, there was an exception in 2008 
um, in 2008 also had the influence of the banking crisis. So we're not sure how you take that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then mortgage rates. Um, mortgage rates went down um, leading up to elections, like we were talking those two months prior. So eight of the last 11 cycles, mortgage rates have decreased prior to election. So that, that kind of backs up the idea that the Fannie Mae group has about that September decrease, maybe it's going to be October, right. but we're going to wait for that December one, see how it goes there. So there's something fun to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you want, um, we'll have some links, but if you want us to send you any of these reports or the sources we're talking about, just please contact us. Right. You have our information and we are your information specialists. We need to get those new home sales contracted before those prices go up. Well, I know. Yeah, so call us. Yeah, all of them. We need yeah. to get them contracted before the prices go up <laughs> next year. So give us a call. Yes, please. <laughs> Until the next time, bye-bye.